Hello, and welcome back to Searching for Service, brought to you by Rotary District 5950. I'm your host, Kelly Kirk. I'm Joe Kirk. And I'm Chad Larson. Before we dive into who our guest is today in studio, Chad is going to remind us of our show sponsor. We want to thank Russell Hampton Company for sponsoring the show. They're the number one printer for rotary swag and gear in the country. If you're watching online, you can see some of the things they sent us from a cutting board to some of the tumblers. Uh, but if you need some uh, rotary gear printed, check them out, russellhampton.com. Beautiful. Thank you for that. So today we have, it's always nice when we have somebody in studio as our guest. Um, we have Ed Bovey, who is the district governor-elect for um, 5960. So this upcoming July is when you will become officially the district governor dum, 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 dum. but he <laughs> also lying. yeah I bet. <laughs> and he also serves served as the past president of stillwater sunrise rotary club for the years 2021 and 2022 welcome thank you for having me we are so happy to have you let's um take just a moment to have our listeners get to know you a little bit so where are you from originally i grew up in a a very small farming community in the very southwest corner of Minnesota. If people know where Laverne, Minnesota is, oh, yeah. I, 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 grew, do. I know where Laverne is. I grew up yeah. southwest of that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I went to school, um, college with an individual that grew up in that area too. So I think Laverne is where he lived. I was going to but... say, past boyfriend. No, it wasn't. It was not. No, it was not. But St. Mary's University is a very small college, so you you get to know individuals very easily. So, so awkward. So awkward. All right. And so how long have you been living here in the Twin Cities? In Stillwater, too. Um, we moved to Stillwater in 1986. So we moved huh. here a long time. That's a great town. Yeah. It is. Wonderful yeah. town. Where do you guys meet for your club meetings? Uh, we meet at the St. Croix Event Center. Uh, oh, yeah. Near the bowling alley. Yeah. People know where the bowling alley <laughs> yeah. is in Stillwater. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I I should know, but I, I'm not aware. So, and so when did you officially join Rotary? I became a member of Rotary in 1997. I like to tell people that I actually became a Rotarian in about 2016. So okay. there's about 20 years of um, attending meetings and paying dues. Okay. And then officially like, <laughs> all right, this is, this is yeah, my jam. Yeah. Maybe, maybe talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. Like, so what was it just a little bit more of a loose experience? Well, I was working, mm -hmm. um, I was the CEO of a nonprofit and spending 50 to 60 hours a week at work. And so the Rotary membership um, was frankly part of my responsibility to be part of the community. And so I was there um, with more selfish motivation maybe than uh, service at that time, even though we did service too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that's interesting. I mean, I, I think I think that that's just what happens in life, right? Like we're just pulled by other forces so hard that, you know, sometimes we're like, well, this is this seems to be an uh, an obligation versus, you know, something I really want to try to get into. And then maybe talk a little bit about when did the switch happen? Was it when yeah. you did retire or was it what before that? No, it was before that. Um, but in around 2015, 16, um, we became acquainted um, with an individual who was doing some work in Kenya. Um, providing uh, residential and educational support to some kids who had been orphaned by mostly tribal warfare in the northwest part of the country. And I'm not sure how, but I was drafted to put together a district grant proposal, maybe because I wrote a lot of those in my profession. Um, maybe it was just chance, I don't know. Okay. Um, but I put together a district grant to uh, install a water well in a remote area of Northwest Kenya. And that was funded. Um, and so then I was involved in uh, securing um, support funding from other clubs within the district and actually was able to take a trip to Kenya to help install the pump for that well. Um, and that's, I guess, when I got hooked. 
So then pretty soon I was president and then here I am. It seems like international <laughs> travel seems to be a real big trigger for Rotarians to kind of take that next step. And you know, and some some do it really early through youth exchange. And then, you know, others, they do it through some level of a service project, but it really does seem to be a commonality amongst a lot of Rotarians that international travel kind of wakes them up to, wow, there's a lot to do. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to do, but it also just broadens your perspective on perhaps the, like the meaning of life, right? Maybe, maybe there's a better way to put it, but... <laughs> <laughs> like that was deep. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to figure out the best way to put it. Maybe it just, you know, we get kind of locked into our bubbles here in the United States, you know, like our respective bubbles. Our Here's an idea. Bubble, our what what was it bubble. for you? Like, what was it about the international travel yeah. that seemed to trigger you? Well, where we went was a very remote area, um, still mud huts no vehicles besides the ones that we brought and we have this perspective in our country of um, poverty and need and i don't think we have any idea yeah. what that actually is but the other part of that is that the people that we encountered were wonderful people and seemed happy to me mm -hmm. so the <laughs> The level of poverty compare, also coupled with the level of happiness within the community it just made me start to think about how I live my life Yeah, and what true happiness really is. Yeah. That's very cool. And I think with Rotary too, you know, as you're talking about, you know, the international, you also see on a whole nother level what Rotary is doing on an international level where... You know, at the club level, you you hear you hear it, but you don't see it as much, and that probably mm -hmm. uh, broadens you out a little bit too. And one of the issues that was really cool when we were there um, was that during that time, in that area of the country, there was a drive on to immunize some kids against polio. And the way they did it there was they had trucks with people and flatbed kind of things, and they would have microphones and speakers and talking in Swahili, of course, mm -hmm. um, so we didn't understand it, but they were trying to get people to bring their kids to uh, get the immunization. And when they would be in the village, at least the village where we were, um, when they would immunize kids within a home, they would put a little strip of paint on here so that the other workers would know that that home was covered and it was just really cool to see it it was a rotary thing in action it was mm -hmm. really cool. wow uh, yeah that is really cool so then you after that you became uh club president you know how, how did you make that leap and what was that like well, it was an interesting experience in our club we do it i think the way you're supposed to and then i was um selected about a year and a half before my term started. Mm -hmm. um, some clubs do that, some don't, um, but our club did. And so there was a good prep period. It just happened by coincidence that the week that I was able to attend the uh, North Central President-elect training, it was in Rochester, and it was in the week that the whole COVID thing was breaking. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I remember that there was um, discussion about whether the event should be held because it was all in person then and the decision was made to go ahead with it a number of people chose not to attend but I, I decided to and so every morning we would get an update from a doctor from the Mayo Clinic about what was going on and of course nobody really knew anything about what was going on but I think he just wanted us to feel better um, and so by the end of that week things were shutting down. Um, and so that was a, sort of an interesting part of that whole experience. And so the, the next part of that is that then my presidency was during the shutdown. And so almost all of our club meetings were Zoom meetings. Yeah. So it was a little different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a tough time to to step in as club president. I, probably I feel like we all just took a, like a big leap backwards into time, thinking through like 
what were we doing? Oh at my that gosh. Time? <laughs> I, yeah. I, I was doing that mentally in my head. Like I exactly remember where I was, what I was doing and just how wild it was to have this whole commotion starting. Did you guys have a good uh, adoption of the zoom really format? Good. Really, really good. good. Okay. Yeah. Our attendance stayed about the same. Our, club of course we were not able to do any fundraisers or anything but i was really proud of our club and that we took the issue to the members and the um, decision was that even though we weren't paying for our meals which is part of the dues that the members agreed to keep the dues at the same level and then we used frankly that savings from not having to feed people to use as our donation money so we were able oh, to wow. maintain all of our projects and and just keep things rolling um, even though we weren't able to have a fundraiser so it was really a cool thing very generous of our members yeah, yeah. What a great it's, idea it's actually really kind well and i think too like we focus so much on achievements and things that we do that we we forget to to really recognize how there were so many great leaders during COVID that kept things from falling down. Like, I mean, it was, it could have so easily, especially with the demographics of, of what a lot of rotary clubs look like Got an older demographic of people that are just like, I don't want to adopt to this zoom thing. I don't want to, we'll just, we'll just give it up and it, we'll come back to it whenever we can. And so I think the leadership during that time was so important because it could have very easily blown rotary apart just mm -hmm. just the way that it's set up i mean it was it was really primed to to be impacted it just shows how great the leadership within rotary all over but specifically what you just talked about with your club so that's really great our, our district i thought also did a really smart thing in that early on in the process there was some resource made available by rotary international and what our district did was made I think it was $600 per club available in a one-time grant just for them to buy the technology mm -hmm. to be able to host these mm -hmm. what were hybrid meetings then. Our club actually still does hybrid meetings. Yeah. Uh, it's it's one benefit, not many benefits of the COVID yeah. pan pandemic, but one benefit is it forced us into the Zoom world yeah. as a group. And in my role now, I really appreciate that as like today, I have four meetings besides this, but they're all Zoom. Yeah. And so I can do all of those from my home and people are just accustomed to that. Yeah. Um, and it makes it much easier to do the job that I'm about to. Um, oh, sure. Save the miles big time. <laughs> yeah. And just it's so efficient. You, yeah. you just wouldn't yeah. be able to schedule <clears throat> mm -hmm. that way. And so either meetings wouldn't happen uh, or there'd be a lot of windshield time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for the, the role as district governor, um, how were you approached for that? Cornered in a hallway. Far <laughs> off. <laughs> 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 yeah, we got a deal I for you. I should say, I'm going to add why. How and why? Well, it was not something that was even on my radar. But once um, my tenure as the president was over, I thought it was just over, but there were a couple of um, members of our club, actually past district governors, who approached me and, and just said, you know, I think you should think about this. Um, I guess I ran a meeting, okay. I, you know, I don't know why. Uh, and, and maybe they approach everyone and most people are wise enough to say no. I don't know. No, and that's, yeah. that's not true. But, uh, <laughs> He's like, just can you cut that out? <laughs> but, but anyway, they encouraged me to just apply. And, and so I thought, well, yeah, I can apply because they'll never select me because why would they? Um, and so I went through the process and applied and um, somehow I was selected. So I would say that the, these two people were mentors of mine mm -hmm. in terms of the presidency, yeah. but then it was through their encouragement that uh, I went through the process to apply for the position. Well, I know you're being really humble. Like you what, sure what, do you, what do you feel like you really bring to the table for district governorship? Like, I mean, you seem like such a well-rounded person that 
you kind of have a lot of experience on a lot of different things. So I guess we'll see about that. Won't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, talk to me a year from now. About this. <laughs> I think that my skill set, um, I think my organizational skills are, are, are pretty decent. I spent over 30 years in a CEO position of a nonprofit. Um, so I'm accustomed to working with boards and, in different groups of people. And mm -hmm. for example, I was, I've been on the radio quite a few times. I might not show today, but I, I have. No, you're doing it's wonderful. A, yeah. You are uh, doing wonderful. And the, uh, and so being able to uh, bring people together uh, under a common purpose or cause, I think is something that, that I've been able to do. And I, I think I can do that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think people appreciate some of the humor that I bring, although most of the jokes I tell nobody gets except me. <laughs> so, that's yeah, okay. Yeah. That's how my husband over here is too. So it sounds like you guys are in really good um, company. But we're, and so I like to bring fun and lightness to, to settings that I'm a part of. Um, and I think at least some people appreciate that. Yeah. No, I love that. I think, I think that those are really great characteristics of good leadership and, I, I'm excited to see how your year goes because I think it's going to go great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when do you find out that you're, so was it three years ago that you start the process? Because it goes, yeah, <laughs> nominee, <laughs> a lot. Well, walk us yeah, through the process. So, yeah, I mean, I, walk we, us through the process. I'm actually going to write it down too right. to visualize it for myself. <laughs> well, I'll have to count back. <laughs> when, when there's a selection process, that begins in late summer of some year. And so that happens like August, September ish of a year. There's an interview process. There's an actual nominating team that's put together, um, interviews all the candidates and then uh, makes a selection or a recommendation actually. Um, and so once that's done, that nominee is sent to all of the clubs of the district. And there's a period where clubs can object to that nominee. I don't know that it's ever happened in our <laughs> district. I, I think it does happen in the world now and then. Who objects? Like, cause the, because as members, we're not aware of it. Right. Is, so is it the president's? Well, the scenario first, it, it never happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, let's play a really great hypothetical. Yeah. <laughs> well, the scenario would be that a candidate from a club who made the application yeah. to become district governor mm -hmm. is one of the candidates not selected, okay. but decides through their club and, and individuals can't object. A club has to object, but through their club, they could object and ask for an election. Then, And then that's what would happen is that then there'd be a, an actual election where clubs would vote on one of uh, on a candidate okay. interesting we should so just do that for fun sometime <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait a couple of years for that <laughs> um, and so anyway then in the fall that candidate is selected they then become the district governor nominee designate yes that's what it is the designate so then you go through that then on july 1 of each succeeding year it moves up so you're, you're the designate initially then you become the the nominee the next year the elect and then the district governor and then there actually are roles for past district governor f up to four so it's about a seven-year overall commitment Ooh, wow i thought i, I was unaware of the, the four years after <laughs> for some I, I don't want to overstate it you know there are jobs yeah, and you're on a no, team and different things yeah. like that but uh, but there are things that you're responsible to do rotary, rotary has a sense now. rotary has a funny yeah. way though of purposing you <laughs> yeah. if you're if you're available yeah okay that's super helpful for me i'm such a visual person i had to write it out and have the last couple of years flown by with all the or does it kind of ramp up as you go well there is some ramping up but time has gone very fast um, and the, the level of panic is just sort of increased <laughs> where it's, it's just kind of a pitch now. Yeah. <laughs> what, um, no going back now though. Yeah. <laughs> Full steam ahead. So, as you're a few months out now, what are, what are some things that you are really looking forward to with this district governor role? 
Well, the thing I'm looking forward to most is actually getting out to all the clubs. I, I've been mm -hmm. to a few, um, but that really is the current district governor's role mm -hmm. yeah. is to um, make that connection. And I'm really looking forward to getting out, um, meeting people. There, there are so many wonderful Rotarians. They really are a great bunch of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are a lot of wonderful things happening within our communities that at the, in the seat I'm in, I really have no idea about. Um, yeah. Some clubs promote themselves, and so we find out about things. We, we know what's going on within our own community pretty much. Um, but there are many communities uh, with very active and successful rotary clubs that just don't promote themselves. So they do a lot of really cool things, but you don't know anything about it. Yeah. It's one of the problems with rotary, I think, mm -hmm. is that we yeah. don't promote ourselves very well. Sure. And I'm looking forward to uh, meeting those people, finding out about some of those things, and maybe encouraging them to to let some other people know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I have this... an opportunity then if you if you think that there's opportunity for them to shine their light here on the podcast, we'd be happy to have them. I can make a note of that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even through the show, we've we've come across clubs where we're like, "How many members do you have? Like forty? And they're like, "Wait a second, you're, you're how many exchange students do you host?" Yeah. Like, and you're like, what? We do two. You raised how much? <laughs> you 11? You know, so. Yeah. How much? And you're, how many projects are you doing? And you just did, never knew it. Mm -hmm. And you're right. Like, I think we do a really poor job of advertising that sometimes, but it kind of goes against the grain of the, the service component sometimes. And you go, but our objective is also to spread the word and to, you know, get more servants. Yes. More, more membership and more. I mean, because it's a no brainer when you're in it. It's so funny. Like everybody that like ever comes into it, they're like, yeah, I mean, it's just rotary is just such a no brainer. But it's that threshold of getting people over the line to see what rotary clubs actually do and how they do it and why it's important and how each of the Rotarians have this passion for serving their communities or learning more about really great organizations. So it's it's just such a conundrum and I'm sure that membership's got to be up there in the t one of your top priorities as a district governor. I mean, I feel like that that's got to carry from every governor all the way forward. It actually starts at the top with Rotary International. Yeah. Uh, there's been a challenge issued that we've accepted um, in every district in the world. Actually, um, President Stephanie Urchik is uh, challenging all of us to grow by at least 100 members each district. In our district, that translates to about a 4% growth. And so the message I'm bringing to clubs is that 4% um, hit in terms of um, achieving a goal. And we're encouraging them to achieve that goal, not to stop there. Mm -hmm. And in terms of numbers, um, I tried to break it down specifically. So if you're a club with 25 members or fewer, that means one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you have 26 members, then it's two. Yeah. Because <laughs> always round up. Yeah. <laughs> for that number, um, which for many clubs becomes an easier um, tackle mm -hmm. rather than saying, oh, we have to gain 100. Um, it's, well, you know, no, we, we need to gain two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Much more achievable. <laughs> we've actually had a good year in, in District 5960 this year. Um, think it's not a secret that Rotary has been declining in membership for quite a few years and COVID certainly didn't help that. In 5960, we've actually reversed that this year um, and we're at about a plus 40. Congratulations. Um, we have, we get statistics from our zone, which is about 25 districts through the kind of the central part of the U.S. here. Um, and there are about three districts in that zone that are actually gaining members this year, and we're one of those. So we're, we're feeling really good about that. that that's a huge that's accomplishment. To be proud of. It is good. It and makes us think maybe we can hit 100 next year. Yeah, yeah. Right, keep the momentum. Well, when you guys meet as districts too, do you guys share some of those things and maybe what you're working on that seems to be reversing the trend? Or like, are there specific items that? you know, your district is focused on this year that, or, or maybe it's probably the last couple of years because you, it's, it's got to take some time to run up the, um, the change in the membership. So. Yeah, certainly the, the success this year was built from activities from last year because you're right. You do have to. Um, it takes time. 
Yeah. Yeah. And there are monthly um, <clears throat> webinars, I guess I would call them, um, zone opportunity or Zoom opportunities that come from our zone that do focus on that very topic in terms of this particular club or this particular district is experiencing success. Why is that? Yeah. And so there'll be a topic that's covered. And well, this is what we think. Why you there? It's never one thing. Yeah. Sure. But anyway, so yeah, that is made available to clubs and districts. Yeah. I mean, it's just, this is such an interesting platform. It reaches clubs all over the world and it's, it'd, it'd be really interesting. I'm sure that there's a lot of districts out there that are going, Hey, how did, how did they do that? And I don't know if you can point to yeah, something. Yeah, what do you think has led to some of that success? Well, well, it's not one thing. Yeah. Um, it really comes down to the clubs. Um, the district can be supportive and offer opportunities and maybe some guidance, but it really comes down to what happens at that community level, at the club level. In our particular district, there are uh, a couple of initiatives that have drawn <laughs> some interest, um, hosting the 2029 International Convention for Rotary has drawn a few people's yeah. interest here. Um, we've had also a few clubs or several clubs actually who have looked at their categories of membership. Um, my club happens to be one of them. We're one of the clubs that is showing some growth. And at the beginning of the year, we created a different membership classification that basically is, it's a full Rotary membership but it cuts out the breakfast and the meeting requirement. And so the members are included in all of the service activities, the fun stuff. They get all the communications from the club and they're, they're full Rotarian, except they don't come to breakfast on Tuesday mornings. So it's cheaper. Yep. It's, it's easier for people to plug in and be a part of it. And I'm not here to say that that's the only answer that it doesn't come with its challenges. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but, <clears throat> It's it's an opportunity for people who either are not morning people or who have jobs or who have families yeah. to be a part of something and participate without that weekly obligation and without the quarterly bill. Well, and we talked off off air about this a little bit about how the really difficult group to get are, you know, the working professionals parents like i mean yeah. that's that's kelly and i i mean part of the reason why we do this show is because we want to model that to other people out there no no it is possible to be part of rotary and raise kids and run yeah. businesses and you know and do all of these things and i think it's such a great adaptation of rotary to recognize that and go well how do we accommodate and no doubt that has to be a huge driver of that membership component where hey we see you We'd love for you to be part of our projects, be on all the communication, get to the things that you can. Maybe come to a meeting every now and then if you really want to. I'm sure somebody would buy them breakfast. Well, um, actually, part of membership is they they can come up to four meetings a year oh. without without. Oh, perfect! Great. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, um, brilliant. So once I mean, a quarter. Once yeah, a quarter. you know, and our hope for some people is if things change for them a little bit, or maybe our, our meetings are very fun. Yeah. Um, and if they come to a few and say, well, gee, maybe I'd like to come more often, that then maybe they become the the full dues paying people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But eventually, no requirement of that. Right. No requirement yeah. there. It, it is funny you say that, though. Like we talk about it all the time, Kelly and I. I mean, we've even spoken about it, chat. Is like when you don't get your Tuesday morning startup. Like your week just doesn't quite fit right. It, it is. It's. I didn't strange. get rotary this week, and yeah. it just. Yeah. It's, it's strange. It, yeah. 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 Once you get used to like this week, I I wasn't that, and I tried to get on the Zoom, and it didn't work. And I know I saw you. The, I saw you like, trying to get in, and and <laughs> and, the, and the speaker what like didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> so. yeah, it's uh, it definitely, and I bet you know over time you'll see a lot a lot of conversion. You know, may take one year for some and five for others but i think once you kind of get get to a few meetings you kind of realize oh this is there's so much value in them then you know the, the time yeah and if that happens it happens <clears throat> if it doesn't happen and the people just simply stay involved doing good in their world and community yeah. well that's fine too mm -hmm. uh what are some of the other things that uh you're looking forward to or initiatives that you have well, well there's sort of a correlating uh 
priority that we have attached to the membership actually is is in addition to attracting members we also want to make sure that we keep the members that we have mm -hmm. um, the data suggests that there are plenty of people that join rotary um, there's just not enough of us that stay and so the data shows that if a rotarian joins and remains a member into their third year of membership the chances of them staying long term is greatly Stuff enhanced applied. many applied. people that leave rotary leave within that first two years yeah. and there are a variety of reasons for that that i won't get into but a priority for us is to pay some particular attention in our district to people in that circumstance mm -hmm. and so we're still putting together our action plan in terms of exactly how to do that but we have our foundation team involved in terms of to figure out in addition to membership um, and our DEI team also to pay some special attention to people during that first two years of their membership mm -hmm. to make sure that they're heard, make sure that they're engaged and that they, and that they have fun as that's part fine. of their experience. Mm -hmm. And so that's a priority connected to the membership. Another, um, priority that we have is around um, a cultural appreciation initiative. Uh, it's the way we're approaching it at, at the district level, our D and I task. And um, we've charged that team with developing some opportunities for all of our members to, to um, have some experiences or have some exposure around people who are from different cultures than yeah the typical Caucasian mm -hmm. male. Yeah. And so that can go a lot of different directions. Um, it could be an age deal, as we've talked about, where mm -hmm. from a cultural appreciation, helping to understand people who are younger, since our demographic is pretty old, mm -hmm. um, that could be a benefit. Um, we're actually, um, having some engagement with some folks from some of the indigenous communities around that culture, um, helping to understand and appreciate that history and a couple other things there that we're looking forward to that um, we hope will help us all understand better, um, but also might help us um, expose ourselves to folks from that um, different culture and also expose folks from that culture to Rotary. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hopefully develop partnerships, whether it results in membership or just some sort of a partnership that doesn't involve membership, that's all okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the tricky thing with Rotary too. Like we support service no matter what it looks like, right? And and where we I think we can get better as an organization is going and and I think that this show has really done a nice job. I mean, at least for me to go, well, why wouldn't you join Rotary if that's the case is, you know, we try to acknowledge people like however you serve is however you serve, who cares? We just believe that Rotary touches everything or you come to a Rotary club and champion that level of service that may may not be present in that Rotary club. It's when it's when it's presented like that, it can be overwhelming sometimes for for people that are just looking for service projects to to serve on mm -hmm. and that seems to be a lot of what we encounter is just you know we're looking to just do a service project and it's it's like well what do you like yeah because you can do anything <laughs> and they're like what <laughs> so it becomes overwhelming on like it, it's it's that whole thing when you kind of you know can do anything you can do nothing to like it's instead of like the, that lack of focus sometimes works against you and in, in our in our wide band of opportunities can be as much of a detriment as it is a strength i don't know that was a diatribe yeah, <laughs> yeah. just pick a lane yeah pick a lane <laughs> well and i think that to your point so the first two years right in that first two years either people pick a lane or they don't like, I, I really think that that's one of the things that happens in that first couple of years is they'll get connected to a couple of people that they really enjoy and they they do kind of similar service or they get on a committee that they like or 
they come in with something they want to champion and then they they rally a lot mm -hmm. of club members around that so so it is really funny because i bet you that if you went through a club and went hey tell me about how you serve it's probably pretty narrow like it's hey i love doing highway cleanup and this that and the other thing and serve serve and doing that and then there's somebody else that's like oh i love being in leadership i love like it it might be something to think through of going in that first two years we have to get them narrow instead yeah, of wide find some focus. maybe maybe yeah. some did we just solve the problem on, on the show? <laughs> well, like, <laughs> so go pick us some trash along the road yeah. <laughs> it's one of my favorites it's actually coming up yeah well what else i know we we're, we got a bit of time left but i don't want to i don't want to miss some of the key uh key things you're looking at as uh, um become... well the other thing that i'd like to just bring up is that um, we have a commitment to uh, fostering peace within our district and it's certainly a rotary international it's a, it's mm -hmm. a theme throughout rotary but we have a three-year theme that we're just ending our first year around make peace visible the um, sort of highlight of my year uh, will be hosting an international peace conference um, from may 1st to the 3rd of 2025 mm -hmm. uh, we have um, already commitments or at least agreements uh, with some folks from uh, different countries of the world to come in and talk about peace. Um, we are um, planning to extend invitations and hope to expand it beyond just Rotary so that people that are interested in peace, whether they're paying Rotary dues or not, might find interest in mm -hmm. attending and participating. And we think it's going to be a really cool event. We have a few things already lined up that we're not ready to announce quite yet. Sure. Um, but we do uh, plan to start marketing the opportunity by July or so okay. of this year um, in hope that it's a great event to help foster peace within our communities. Um, Love it. That's a great, great idea. When, yeah. you when you talk about the event, you, you kind of touched on and bring in speakers. Do you see it as kind of a local rotary, you know, you said other than just rotary, but or do you plan to have people, other Rotarians from across the country come in or, you know, where is the focus? We hope so. We're going to mark it that way. Yeah. Um, and we hope to get participation at the program level from some of those areas too, that we're not just limiting it, limiting this to what's going on in our own community, although that'll be part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but we have a team that uh, is going to be here, we think, uh, this is probably one of those things I wasn't supposed to talk about, but the, uh, <laughs> um, uh, we think we're going to have a friendship exchange with a group from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Oh, very cool. That will be in town. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have a group of people that will be visiting Sao Paulo, too, um, probably the month before that. Um, and so they're going to be here visiting, learning about what's going on here, but also helping us to to understand what's going on in Brazil in terms yeah. of peacekeeping, whether it's environmental or whatever it is that they yeah. choose to talk about. So that'll be exciting. Good. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you can get the international president elect. Uh, he, he's going to be from Brazil. Well, Mario, yes, so Mario. Yes, yeah, who lived in White Bear Lake, actually, oh, yeah, as, a, oh, yeah, as an exchange right. student. So <laughs> very cool thing um, that we can't talk about that. I, know that. <laughs> <laughs> I, about, I feel like you about went into it. And then like, oh, oh. No, no. Wait for July. Yeah. For July. Out we'll about talk about that. Well, we, or we, we talk about it all. We just wait. We just shelve the show until July. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we have Tom on, you know, who's the aide to Stephanie. Yeah. So we hear how, how busy and challenging the schedule can be. So I understand. And we get the, we can't talk about that yeah, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Definitely understand. Dang, Please don't dang, bring dang. this up on the podcast. Dang, dang. Okay. And we're like, we got it. Tom. We got it. Uh, well, so anything else kind of before we start to wrap up that uh, you really want to highlight as you approach your uh, year? You know, I think we covered it pretty well. I just am really excited for the year to start. There is a great team in place in our district, uh, team leads and team members um, that are, I think, ready to roll and excited to go. And I'm excited to try to keep up with them. Very cool. That's really fun. You know, one question we ask a lot of our guests that we haven't asked you, do you have a favorite service project that you've done with Rotary in your uh, extended time? Um, 
you know, roadside cleanup's kind of a cool I, thing. I, I, we, we do that too. A lot of Rotary Clubs pick up mm -hmm. trash. Um, I'm involved with our climate action team and something that sort of down and dirty in, in our communities in, in Washington County, there um, is plans for uh, curbside pickup of compost, mm -hmm. but it's not in place. Yeah. Uh, it's just keeps getting pushed out. <laughs> and so our club about a year and a half ago um, through the generous offer of one of our members um, said that, well, if you bring your compost to meetings, we'll get it to a spike because there's a place you can take it mm. in Matamidi. And so that started. And so people would bring their compost stuff, which isn't always the most pleasant stuff in the world. No, it's yeah. the stuff that stinks. Winter. Winter is a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's happened on a weekly basis for, boy, a year and a half at least. And the person who uh, collects it and delivers it also weighs it. And so at last count, I think we were up to a couple of tons of compostable material that was gathered and, and brought to the correct spot. So it's just kind of a cool thing. If you come to one of our meetings and there's a smell outside the door, it's because it's summer. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Well, any any parting uh, words as, as we wrap up here that you'd like to uh, leave the listeners with? No, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for the opportunity. Join Rotary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we need 100. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to have you back at some point and hear how things are going and definitely mm -hmm. uh, yeah. have somebody, if not you, to come talk about the uh, the Peace Conference that year. That'd be great. Together. as yeah. when, when you can share more. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah, thank you so much for carving time out to come in studio too. That little truck from Stillwater. <laughs> my pleasure. It's my pleasure. <laughs> it's been an honor. Thank you so much for tuning in to Searching for Ser Searching for Service. I'm your host, Kelly Kirk. I'm Joe Kirk. And I'm Chad Larson. We'll be back. <laughs>